Okay, I, for my dysphagia treatment, I have laryngeal elevation exercises. So first and foremost, according to ASHA, um, these laryngeal elevation exercises that I found are considered oral motor exercises. So that includes um, stimulating the, mus the, the muscles that you're treating or asking the patient to move the muscles that pertain to the stage or portion of the swallow that you're trying to alter in order to improve um, that muscle's function or strengthen the swallow overall. So during a laryngeal elevation exercise, you are ask, asking the patient to lift or elevate their larynx and hold it in that fixed position. Um, so this particular oral motor exercise is considered a non-swallow uh, exercise because you are, and I'll explain it more, but it's typically called the falsetto exercise. So you're more focused on a glide and pitch than you are um, the actual mechanism of swallowing in that moment. So um, this exercise is also very similar to the Mendelssohn maneuver. The Mendelssohn maneuver uh, focuses, or a part of the Mendelssohn maneuver is having the patient elevate the larynx and hold it in that fixed position um, to, in order to open the esophagus and reduce that risk of aspiration. And um, with the Lauren, I'm sorry, with the falsetto exercise, this is achieved through um, again that glide and pitch, which I'll explain more in a moment. And laryngeal elevation exercises are intended for patients who have limited or reduced laryngeal movement, obviously. So, uh, in an article by Logman in 1997 called "The Evaluation and Treatment of Swallowing Disorders," uh, he explained that the falsetto exercise creates that movement of the larynx that um, mimics the elevation that you would see during swallowing. So if you've ever talked in a high voice or sang at a high pitch, uh, you'll notice that your larynx goes higher the higher your pitch. So the idea behind the falsetto exercise is that gliding up in pitch to reach a high squeaky voice and you're holding it for several seconds with effort. Um, and in more recent research, I found what is called the effortful pitch glide. And this is an article by Vasquez, Pearson, Langmore, and Langmore, I'm sorry, in 2014. And this article is called the effortful pitch glide, a potential new exercise evaluated by dynamic MRI. And it's from the Journal of Speech, Language, and Hearing Research. So this article about the effortful pitch glide explains how it's really a combination between the falsetto exercise, what we, what we just talked about, and the pharyngeal squeeze maneuver. Um, so again, the falsetto exercise is working on that laryngeal, laryngeal elevation, and then the combination of the pharyngeal squeeze maneuver is working on shortening those muscles of the pharynx, which has to happen during swallowing. So um, again, this exercise was shown to be uh, effective in improving laryngeal elevation and also the anterior hyoid excursion uh, and working with the long pharyngeal muscles and those uh, muscles that shorten the pharynx during swallowing. So I found another piece of research uh, that I thought was interesting that showed a lot of efficacy, the McNeil dysphagia treatment protocol and there are currently training sessions for this around the country, um, so it's difficult to find a lot of information on it, but from what I could find, uh, according to an article by Land et al. 2012, the idea behind this treatment is to swallow hard and fast, and it follows a dietary hierarchy with advancing steps of altered bolus volume and consistency. And I also found an article by Melon Drakey, Hind, Gagnon and Logeman, and I'm sorry, Logeman and Robbins, 2011, and the title of this article was "The Utility of Pitch Elevation in the Evaluation of Oral Pharyngeal Dysphagia: uh, Preliminary Findings." And um, this article made a good point. Um, it said that the study showed that the patients with decreased pitch or laryngeal elevation ability were unable to fully protect their airway which resulted in more penetration and aspiration. So because they didn't have that laryngeal elevation, they were more likely to aspirate. Um, and they also made a good point that this exercise could also be of diagnostic use, not necessarily in predicting a patient's um, aspiration or penetration, but the likelihood that they are more at risk. Um, so obviously never use this in isolation, but it is something that you could take into consideration in diagnostics as well. So now I'm going to move into the demonstration of the falsetto exercise. 
So Erin, I'm gonna explain this again. The falsetto exercise, we're gonna start at a low pitch um, on the sound E, and we're just gonna glide up into a high pitch. And at the same time, we're going to try and move our Adam's apple up with um, our pitch glide. Okay. All right, so um, we'll do the first one together. Okay. Okay. So go ahead and place your hand on your throat. So let's start on the low pitch. Okay. Good, good job. Okay, so I'm gonna have you do that again and I just want you to like watch my hand and when I get up to the top, I want you to really hold it out and I want you to watch how I'm squeezing my hand and I want you to kind of try and think of your muscles like that too with that effort, okay? So would you like me to start it with you? Yes. Okay. So let's start on all the E. I apologize in advance. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Good job. I can't get any iron. All right. And that is the falsetto exercise specifically used for laryngeal elevation.